I'm Brandi Agerbeck of Loosetooth.com and today I'm going to tell you the story about how I became a graphic facilitator. So when I'm doing work, the number one question I get is how did you get into this work? And it's not a short answer and I answer pretty awkwardly. <laughs> so I'm thankful for this video to tell you my story. Um, it starts off when I toddle off to college and um, I was the kind of student who uh, drew all the time. I was very creative. I was a star student, um, but I was also the first person in my family to go to college, so I really didn't know what all that meant. Um, thankfully, I made a really good intuitive choice to go to Grinnell College. Grinnell is a teeny tiny, very tough liberal arts school in the middle of Iowa cornfields, and uh, when I was looking at those stacks of um, college brochures, something that resonated with me was that Grinnell looked like the kind of place where I could be independent. Um, Grinnell does not have a lot of required classes. You have your requirements for your major, but the one required class is your freshman tutorial. So you don't have like X number of language classes. And in that freshman tutorial, they teach us how to research and write and speak. And I really think that the tutorial is part of the secret sauce of Grinnell. Um, it gives you those, it begins to give you those critical thinking and communication skills that you're going to need at Grinnell and for the rest of your life. So my freshman tutorial was um, on utopian literature and it was taught by literature professor Paula Smith. And the final assignment in our tutorial was to create our own utopia, uh, which I think is a wonderfully Grinnellian assignment. Um, I desperately wish I knew what my 18-year-old self thought Utopia was. Uh, all I do remember was I created little hand-bound books about my Utopia um, in one of my classic cases of making an assignment more kinesthetic and hands-on. Um, but as I got ready for the final speech, I had this flash of this image that I wanted to draw as I gave my talk. So bright and early the next morning, I'm giving my speech and I'm talking a little bit and I'm drawing a little bit on the chalkboard and I'm talking and I'm drawing, going switching back and forth and I can distinctly picture Paula Smith at the back of the room looking at me like I am an alien who dropped from the sky and not in a negative way but just sort of a okay she's drawing <laughs> sort of way um, but that was the way it made sense for me to communicate to tell my story was through this drawing um, so I became a studio art major. I studied, I focused on printmaking and I did a lot of etching and, and monotypes. Got my degree, moved to Chicago, and I got a crappy retail job in an art store. That lasted four months and I quit and I started temping. And my college classmate, Kathy Clemens, uh, gave me a call and said, I've got an opportunity for you. And at the time, um, I was, knew I wanted to start my own company, which started out designing rubber stamps that I drew. Um, but I knew I didn't want a full-time job. And she said, no, 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 no. This is a six-day contract. And there's something about this space that's very brandy. So, you know, let's try it. Okay. So I'm 22 years old. I don't know which end is up. Um, and I walk into this office, and it is a office of Ernst & Young, and it's a space designed to run change management workshops for their clients using a process from a company called MG Taylor. So the space was called the Accelerated Solutions Environment, ASE, and the workshops were called Design Shops. All right. So this is 1996. Um, it is the middle of the consulting boom. It's the beginning of the dot-com boom, and they were trying to build a ne network of contractors. And honestly, <laughs> they were taking any warm body who walked in. But um, I'm work talking, I'm interviewing with Alan Mayfield, and he says, see that person over there? And I see somebody across the space um, drawing at a giant dry erase wall in front of a small group of people. And I said, yeah. And he says, you're going to do that in 20 minutes. And I said, of course I am. <laughs> because one... I was too young to be freaked out, and two, it clicked with that experience I had way back at Grinnell. It just made sense to me. So um, that began my career as a graphic facilitator. So the very first project um, I was hired on, we show up, our team, this team of contractors, we were called knowledge workers. The very first thing we're told is, you are all facilitators. Each one of you is facilitating and making the work of the participants easy. 
So whether you are writing an assignment that participants are going to do, or you're setting up the environment so that there's the right tables and chairs for an exercise, or you're doing a musical transition, taking the group from one space to another, or you're doing this thing called graphic facilitation where you're mapping out the conversation on a big dry erase board, you are facilitating. And all these details matter in helping facilitate and make the experience of those 50 to 100 people easier. And um, it truly was the accelerated solutions environment. Time after time, these clients would say, we got six months of work done in three days. And it was because MG's, MG Taylor's process was so solid and so thoughtful and thought through all these details about how people get work done. So um, I understood what facilitation meant. I was learning what facilitation meant. And I had a name for this thing I love to do, graphic facilitation. So um, I contracted with Ernst & Young for three years, from 96 to 99, and um, what was great was I kind of fell into the work, but I could recognize that it um, spoke to my strengths, that I really got to use this lifetime of drawing experience because I could draw fast. And I got to think, like there was this, like the best part of these workshops was the third morning, it was a three-day workshop, the third morning would start out with something called the synthesis conversation. So in the process, we led people through day ones and day one and two, and um, kind of like having them look at all these different perspectives and test all these different things that were separate from the, the problems they were, came there to solve. And then the transition into the third day was a synthesis conversation. Um, and it was open-ended and it was complex and it was tangly and it was fantastic. And it was sort of this transition from all these outside perspectives and all this excitement and anxiety about, okay, now when are we going to get to it? When are we going to solve these problems? So they would start the third day with this open-ended conversation that would slowly form until the group knew this is what we need to work on. And then they would just zoom for the, the third day for the rest of the day. Uh, I loved it. It was just... I love that it was this big open-ended conversation. It was like 50 to 100 people, and I got to map it, and I got to use my thinking skills and my drawing skills to sort of find out what the pieces and the connections were in this conversation. And uh, my good friend John Ward says that most people don't learn to listen until they're about 30. Uh, thankfully, I had some listening skills going in, so I was able to, um, uh, as, even as a 22-year-old, listen. Uh, and this... this um, role of graphic facilitation let me use my drawing skills and my thinking skills and my listening skills to really facilitate this group of people. So i um, very thankful for that experience. I started out, like I said, from 96 to 99 for three years contracting with Ernst & Young. And what was great was that um, I got to learn process and facilitation and really this uh, M.G. Taylor's process about why all these details mattered to help a group get fantastic work done. And I had the content of Ernst & Young's clients. So there's really strong grounding and process, but the process in front of all these Fortune 500 companies that Ernst & Young served. And uh, what was great was every workshop was a different company and a different industry. So it was great because I had both the grounding in the process and the variety of content um, from all these different clients in all these different industries. So that is my story. Um, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> that's where I began. Uh, that's how I found out that there was something that uh, work that did what I love to do, and it was called graphic facilitation. Uh, so I am Brandy Agerbeck. Thank you for listening to my story. And if you would like to see what the heck I've been doing for the last 15 years, please check out loosetooth.com. And there you'll find a portfolio of lots and lots of stuff. So thank you so much for watching.